All right, well, good morning, folks, and um, thank you for uh, coming to be with the Lord today in, uh, in His house, as we can call it. Um, again, my name is Daniel. Uh, just a short um, intro to me. I, I know Thomas asked me to fill in, and it's such a privilege to be here and just to uh, really, just, uh, really just be a servant of the Lord and um, to His people, because you are His people, and I'm so thankful that He's called us all to glory and to righteousness in his name. And um, I've, I'm 29 years old. Uh, I've been in the Marine Corps for 10 years. I'm originally from Florida, so that's just a short intro um, to me. And I've been in the Lighthouse for a, a few years now, just serving. You have a question, ma'am? Can you speak up a little loud? Yes, yes, sorry. Sorry about that. If anybody can't hear me, just, just let me know. Um, I'll be happy to project my voice a little bit more. It's not hard for us military people, but... Let's hear what the Lord has to say today. Um, we're going to pull our text from uh, John fourteen twenty six, And I want to bring a message today called, Who Are You Listening To? And before Thomas uh, asked me to do this, he told me that everybody here was already saved. So that brought an inclination to my heart and to my mind to bring a message on something that should be familiar to us all already. Um, and that's... Uh, going to be a message on the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to pull our text from John 14. John 14, 16 says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, and I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live. Ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. And he that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him, Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him. Uh, see the note, we, keyword we, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me, not ke- me, not keepeth not my sayings, And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. And here's where we're going to launch from, verse 26. And it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you so much for this opportunity, Lord, to preach your word. Lord, I thank you for the gift of salvation that you've blessed us all with, Lord, and that blessed birthright, Lord, that you've called us all unto righteousness in your name's sake, Lord. I thank you for every person here, God, and I pray, Lord, that you would empty us all of sin, Lord, remove our thoughts, Lord, remove distractions, Lord, help your Holy Spirit, Lord, preach the message, Lord, to us today so that we would be edified and built up and leave here encouraged, Lord, to fight another day in the good fight of faith, Lord, that we might contend, Lord, earnestly for it, that which you have died for. Lord, please use this time, Lord, to glorify yourself, Lord, through us at our expense, Lord, so that you might receive much praise. And I give you this in Jesus' name. Amen. So... The first point I want to make, and we're going we're gonna to jump around here a little bit in Scripture, and it's a question. The title of the message was, Who Are You Listening To in This Day and Age? I don't know if you all have news here, um, but certainly if you don't have the news, you certainly have other people that are around us on a daily, weekly basis. Me, even in the military, wherever I go, I run into a human being, a man, a woman, somebody, a physical person. Um, that which Jesus even died for. And so the first question I have, which is the first point, is uh, are you listening to man? That's the question. That's the first question. Are you listening to man? 
And like I said, Thomas told me that everybody in here uh, has already been born again. And so we as Christians, we know that we're called not to listen to man and to not be of the world. And so I think in this day and age, there's so much, so many times that we could look at what's going on around us and we could look to man for some type of um, some type of deliverance or some type of hope. Um, I think uh, in the military, there's so many times where I myself uh, have listened to man and it's actually caused me uh, a disruption if I'm not able to discern what that person is, is telling me or I'm going to follow the wrong man because their thoughts and their words and their, their heart is not affixed on God. And that really can lead me astray a lot of the times. And I think... Uh, if we look at Judges 16 real quick, um, you don't have to turn there, but we look at uh, the story of Samson and Delilah, and Samson was deceived by a man, by a woman. And I'll just read you the passage, and it says, And she said unto him, How canst thou, I say, love thee, when, when thine heart is not with me? And thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth, and it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go away from me and I shall become weak and like any other man. And so here's a, one example of a uh, man listening to another woman or man perhaps in this circumstance and he paid the penalty uh, very costly but at the same time God was using that to bring deliverance to um, his people at that time but that's just one example where Samson lost his eyesight he lost his hair he lost his strength he lost so many earthly um, gifts and talents that the Lord gave him to use for really the Lord's edification and glory and at the end God still redeemed him and uh, brought vengeance upon him so there's one example. In Luke 20, 46 through 47, it says, Beware, and this is Jesus speaking, Beware of the scribes which desire to walk in long robes and love greetings in the markets and the highest seats in the synagogues and the chief rooms at feasts which devour widows' houses and for a show make long prayers. The same shall receive greater damnation. And I have so many friends, and I don't know where you guys have been at in, in your life, but I have a lot of friends that will listen to man's doctrine a lot. Um, they will run off into various types of theologies and cults and different um, you know, di dispensations and different things out there that the world brings up that man talks about. And that was what Jesus was talking about at this time was uh, beware of the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, these people that uh, seek to be praised uh, in public and things like that. But yet, um, behind closed doors, uh, they're very much hypocritical. So Christ is talking to us to beware of man. Again, beware of men. In Matthew twenty six fifteen, it says, And said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto. And they accounted, uh, they, coven they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And this is the story where Judas sold Jesus down the river for 30 pieces of silver, again, to man. Uh, Judas likened his, uh, his vanity and his pride, his, his selfish being inside of himself, the, the pride of life, you know, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. He saw all that and he didn't, he didn't seek to crucify his flesh first and to have self-discipline and control, but his eyes were on the money. And so, but it was, came from man and man came to him and just like... Um, just like so many of us in our life, at times we listen to men. I would think in my position here, um, there's been times where the doctor has diagnosed me with a certain illness or whatever the case. And while that may be true, it may be the fact, um, we don't have to live by that. Because we know when we die, we're going to get new bodies. And this body is slowly fading away, like Paul says. And... He, he, he doesn't count. He counts it all as loss. So again, in like it says in Romans 12, we need to have the renewing of our mind. We know even me, we, our flesh is fading away. So there's no reason um, at the end of the day to be worrying about that so much 
when if the doctor comes and tells us this is the diagnosis, when I've seen many, many, many uh, missionaries that out by faith, uh, God has healed them in a miraculous way. I believe there's three types of healing, and this is specifically uh, medicine. God's blessed us with medicine. He's blessed us with miracles. And then the ultimate healing, God will soon take us away. And I know we would all love to be there in glory right now, uh, much better than we are here. Um, the second point I want to make is, um, it can be, it can, it can sound confrontational, but it's are you listening to Satan? And Satan can talk, Satan can talk to us. Um, we as Christians, we do need to know who our enemy is. We have to put on the armor of God every single day. That's what God calls us to do. And surely, Adam and Eve, the very first ones that fell, they listened to Satan and they listened to the devil, our adversary, who walketh about like a roaring lion, seeketh who he may devour. And so I want to encourage you all today not to listen uh, to the devil. Satan and his demons, they cannot possess us, but they can oppress us. The mind um, is a very unique thing and it can come under control of our own thoughts. Maybe not from man, but from what, um, contrary to, to the word of God, is telling us. Anytime there is something that conflicts with the word of God, it is of Satan. It is an attribute of, of the devil. Because the word Satan means adversary, which means in conflict with God, which means the opposite of righteousness. It is evil and destruction. And when we start to listen to those thoughts, uh, he can take over control and oppress our minds and it will hinder our walk with God. And eventually it will uh, tear us down into a state of sadness or depression um, or loss of faith. And again, we can grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And so in 1 John 2, 16, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it is of the world. So anytime uh, that we know that something comes in, in contradiction with the Word of God or good thoughts and whatnot, we know that comes from Satan. And so 3 John 11 says, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good, and he not doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. I think of here Mark 5, 1 through 8, where we have the, uh, the, the Gadaric demonite. And Jesus here says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him. No, not with chains, because that he had often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains he had plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him, and always night and day. He was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And we know the rest of the story. Uh, there's 2,000 devils in this man. And they immediately departed uh, after Jesus came and made them leave. And so we can see here that if people are lost, they're going to have an unclean spirit. So when it comes to us dealing with people, if they do us wrong, we, would, we should think in our minds, we don't know what that spirit is coming from, where it's coming from. Uh, like I said, even a Christian can be oppressed. He can be out of his walk with God at times. And so we, even as Christians, um, can treat other people uh, not the right way at times because we're still living in this flesh. And so God's called us to not live of the, the, uh, the sin nature, but of the divine nature. We who are saved, we know that we've been called to that divine nature. And that is what we're to live in and by. And we're, allow, we're supposed to allow God to control our very thoughts in our hearts and our mind. And so moving on in Matthew 4, it says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit, keyword spirit here, into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. 
And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these, that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil, taking him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, for him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil, he leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered him. And so we know through this story, Jesus was led by the Spirit, right? And this was right after Jesus had been baptized uh, by the Spirit. The Spirit had came down uh, in the likeness of a dove, and the Father opened the heavens and said, Thou Son, in whom I am well pleased. And there Jesus went to fulfill prophecy, to walk in the desert uh, for 40 days and 40 nights and be tempted by the devil, uh, just likened as we all have been, uh, so that he would not sin and he would become the perfect sinless son of God. And the last point I really want to make to wrap this up is, are you listening to the Holy Spirit? That was the title of the message, who are you listening to? But are you listening to the Holy Spirit? And that's who we're called to listen to. And I want to show you some examples in Scripture of where God's Holy Spirit shows up in miraculous ways. And even from the very beginning of Scripture, in Genesis 1-1, we see God. And in Genesis 1-2, it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God Moved upon the face of the waters. Right from the beginning, here we see the Spirit of God. And think about this great statement. I never had discerned this until just a few weeks ago through study. But it says, And the earth was without form and void and darkness. Here it was upon the face of the deep. We see a couple words. We see without form. We see void. We see darkness. And we see the deep. But the Spirit of God moved. And that is what God wants to do with our lives. He wants to move in places that are deep and dark and void. God wants to move in those dark areas of our lives and other people's lives that are having difficult times. And sometimes there's famines. Sometimes there's overabundant joy of blessing and all types of uh, rewards that Christ gives us. But again, we just read that Christ even himself was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights fasting without any food or water. The only miraculous fast that, that could happen besides Moses on the mountain. And in Acts 2, 4 here it says, this is the explosion of the Holy Ghost when he comes on scene uh, to raise us all up into glory. And it says, Acts 2, 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And so when we yield ourselves to what God has called us to do, whatever it is to witness to somebody, to pray for other people, to do whatever it is that God has called us to do, the Holy Ghost is going to show up and He's going to remake that person's life, whoever it is that you're called to touch and bless. In 1 Corinthians 2.10, For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. And we know that the fruits of the Spirit are what God has called us to also. God, we cannot put the, the fruits of the Spirit and say the fruits of man or the fruits of self. Those fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, long-suffering, forbearance, meekness, uh, all those are evidence of the Spirit, of a life yielded to the Spirit. So there's no way that we as man, as woman, as selfish human being, can produce those fruits in and of ourselves. 
We have to allow ourselves to be yielded to the Holy Spirit for those pr- fruits to be self-evident. And that is what Jesus came and died for, is so that there would be much fruit among uh, His kingdom and His people, and so that many sons and daughters would be raised into glory through salvation in Christ. In Ephesians 4.30, it says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. And I want to say, folks, if you're here today and you're saved, Jesus Christ has sealed you unto the day of redemption. And there's no way that you can lose your salvation because here we see that Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit of God has sealed us surely unto the day of redemption. Another thing that the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit has called us into is found in 2 John 4-7. through 7. And it says, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth. And a few verses below, and it says, And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. And this is the commandment that, as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. And what is that commandment that we should walk in? It is love. We are to walk in love and in truth. And so often do I find myself reminding, the Holy Spirit reminding myself, To always preach the truth in love. We must always do that as children of God. And Paul said, excuse me, John here said, He greatly rejoiced that his children walked and they were found walking in truth and in love. And so even Jesus says here, For many deceivers even are entered into the world, and who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And this is the deceiver and an antichrist. And so remember, if that spirit of man or that spirit of the devil is talking to you, we know that that's the spirit of the Antichrist. And I want to read here an encouraging verse. And that's uh, especially for us here who believed and in, in, uh, are saved by Jesus. In 1 John 5, 6, and it says, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And we see here the Trinity of Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And what a blessing it is to know that we have those three, God for sal- uh, God the Father for creation, God the Son for salvation, and God the Holy Spirit for sanctification, edification, and glorification. And praise God that we have the Trinity who daily loadeth us with blessings. And His mercies are new every day that we might not be consumed in the long-suffering of God. How great it is that we are children of God and that we know that the Lord looketh after us. And even us who are His children have the angel of the Lord that uh, daily uh, walketh round about us uh, to help us and guard us and protect us. And in 2 Peter uh, 1 through tw- uh, one twenty says, Knowing this, first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any Private interpretation. Here, uh, Matt Henry here once said, he said, The truth and reality of the gospel also are foretold by the prophets and the preeminence of the Old Testament, who spake and wrote under influence according to the direction of the Holy Spirit of God. How firm and sure should our faith be, who have such a firm and sure foundation rested upon the word. When the light of the scripture is darted into the blind mind and dark understanding by the Holy Spirit of God, it is like the daybreak that advances and it diffuses itself through the whole soul till it makes perfect the day. As the scripture is the revelation of the mind and will of God, every man ought to search it to understand the sense of the meaning. What a blessing, what a blessing to see men of old renown that wrote the Bible were moved by the Holy Spirit of God from the beginning until Revelation. And I want to read one last verse and it says in Romans fifteen thirteen. Now the God of hope, keyword God of hope, we have much hope in our God, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye are also full of goodness, filled in with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, 
I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. And he could have used any other analogy here and he could have said himself the power of him the power of old scripture he could have said anything he wanted but he said the power of the holy ghost and here we see the power of the holy ghost is which gives us that hope and that longing blessed assurance that we again will see christ one day uh, when we meet him up in the air and so folks i just want to encourage you today that who are you listening to are you listening to God, the Holy Spirit, our, our Savior, Jesus Christ, at the Trinity, that's, which, is, which is as we've seen. Are we listening to man or are we listening to the devil? And I know here today as Christians, we all listen to that Holy Spirit. And I pray that the God of hope would continue to sanctify your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you so much, Lord, for a time, Lord, where we could worship your, your Spirit, God. There's not many messages, Lord, that are preached on the Holy Spirit of God, Lord, but I hope and pray, Lord, today that your people, Lord, were edified and sanctified, Lord, through hearing your word and that they've yielded themselves, Lord, to the Holy Spirit as you've taught me many things, Lord, so much, Lord, through the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for the many blessings that you give us. Thank you again for thy word. Thank you for thy spirit teaching us all things and continue to teach us, Lord, until the day which you call us all home. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.